Hello everybody and welcome to video 2 of the FPS series. So as I mentioned before, in this series we're going to be developing a first person shooter game and it is going to use a similar tech stack to the TypeScript game engine tutorial series but we're going to be handling things a little bit differently this time around. So to start, first we're going to be using TypeScript. If you're not familiar with what that is, you'll want to browse to typescriptlang.org and have a look through the documentation to become familiar with the language. This tutorial series is not going to explain how to use the language itself. It's simply going to use it as a tool to develop our end product. We're also going to be making use of Node.js. The current version for lifetime support is 12.14. I actually am using 10.15, which should be more than enough for our purposes. So you'll need to download and install Node.js. You'll also need to download and install Visual Studio Code. Now, of course, you're free to use any code editor that you like. You could use Notepad if you so desire. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be using this because it provides a lot of conveniences and things to just make our lives a lot easier in this tutorial series. I'll also, of course, be using Chrome for most of my debugging. So to start off, I've created a new folder on my drive, and I've called it Gloom, which is actually what we're going to be uh, titling our project. And so from this empty folder, I'm going to open with code. And as you can see, we have absolutely nothing in here. So there's a couple of things that we need to go ahead and create. First, if we go to Terminal, New Terminal, and execute npm init. This will ask us a bunch of questions, which for now we're just going to accept the default. So basically you just keep pressing enter until you reach the end. Once that's done, a package.json file will be created. If we open it up, we see that we have a very basic configuration for a package. We're going to be using npm for this because it's a nice convenient way to include the libraries that we want to use, as well as set up our build process. Next, back in the terminal, execute npm install typescript double dash save dash dev. And what this does is it installs the typescript package as a dev dependency, meaning it's not something that our package requires to, in order to actually run or be used, only to be built. As you can see here, we're using typescript 3.7.4. Within package.json, we'll want to add a new script. The scripts are indicated by their name and then the actual content that gets run. So we'll want to put a comma at the end of the first line and add a line which is called build, which executes node and then runs the TypeScript compiler from within the node modules folder. For reference, node modules is where all of our packages that we install via npm install are located. Next, we'll actually want to copy this build line, paste it into the terminal, but before executing it, add double dash init. As you'll see, this successfully creates a tsconfig file. This tsconfig file is used in order to configure the TypeScript compiler for our project. There are a few things in this file we want to change. First, change ES5 to ES6. Next, we'll want to set source map to true. So uncomment the line and it'll make sure that source maps are generated. This maps our TypeScript to our JavaScript so that the browser can debug using our TypeScript. We'll get more into this later. Uncomment the line that says outdir, which is out directory, and add to it dist with a trailing slash. This is where the output of the TypeScript compiler will be placed. Uncomment the next line down, which is root directory. Add source with a trailing slash to it. Next, we want to turn off strict mode, at least for now, so just comment this line out. That's all we should need to do for now. Next, there's a couple more things we need to install. We'll need to execute npm install webpack space webpack cli space webpack dev server space double dash save dev. This will install multiple packages at once. This will likely take a couple minutes to finish up. You may see some warnings pop up in the console. Don't worry about them for now, they're not important. So as mentioned before, we're going to be using a couple of libraries to support our development with this product. One of those is going to be 3.js. The other is going to be Box2D, but specifically a TypeScript Box2D port. So the packages we need to install are 
3 for 3JS, and at flyover slash box2D, which is the TypeScript port of the box2D physics system. Note that we did not use double dash save dev, because in package.json, we want these as actual dependencies since they're required. We may wind up changing this later, but for now, it separates the two nicely. One more package that we'll need to install is called tsloader, which is something that's going to be used by Webpack. If you're not familiar with Webpack, Webpack is a library which allows us to bundle up all of our JavaScript and sometimes HTML and CSS if we want to into one nice package that can simply be referenced by the browser. Since we're using CommonJS as our module resolution, we'll need to use Webpack in order to actually use this in the browser. We'll get more into the reasons later on as to why I chose this. In the Explorer, we'll want to create a new file, and we'll call this gitignore. This is so that if you wind up checking this code into a repository of your own, certain unneeded things won't get checked in along with it, such as the entirety of our node modules folder or the dist folder, which contains our build output. To do this, we add one entry on each line. First is node modules with a trailing slash, and the second is dist with a trailing slash. Save the file and close it. We're done for now with that. Next, we'll need to create a new file. We'll call it index.html. This is going to be our main file that renders our game in the browser. Its content is actually pretty straightforward. We've got our standard doc type tag, our HTML and header, our title, which is Gloom, a JavaScript reference to a bundle JS. We'll touch more on that in a moment, as well as a body with a canvas that has an ID of viewport. We'll need this to select the canvas element later because the canvas is our render target. Create another new file, call it webpack.config.js. This file has a little bit more going on. So I'm not gonna go over what everything is in here, but basically this is the file which tells Webpack how to actually package our code. So this is where the TypeScript loader will be used. We'll want to set our dev tool to be source map. That's so that we can debug our code later on. For now, we wanna be in development mode and our output file name is going to be bundle.js. I'm going to set library to gloom. This option allows us to access our code from the console in the web browser. Take a moment to go ahead and type all this out into your file. Next, we'll need to create a new folder. Call it src. This is where all of our TypeScript source is going to live. Under this, create another folder. Let's call this core. And under that, we'll want to create a new file. We'll call it engine.ts. We'll want to export a class called engine. Under core, create another new file called renderer.ts. Similar to before, we'll want to export a class called renderer. Before we fill out our renderer, we need to import some things. We'll need to import WebGL renderer and WebGL renderer parameters from three. Next, we'll create a private variable of type WebGL renderer. Create a public constructor and pass it canvas element. This canvas element will be the target to which our internal WebGL renderer renders to. In order to tell it this, we'll need to create a new WebGL parameters object, setting the canvas property to our canvas element. Next, we assign a new WebGL renderer to this internal, passing params to its constructor. Back in the engine, we'll want to create a private underscore renderer of type renderer. Note that when we type this out and accept the autocomplete, it'll auto import the module for us. Next, we'll need another import. This time, we're going to be importing star as box2d from flyover box2d. From here, we'll create a new private underscore physics world, which is of type box2d.b2world. This physics world will be responsible for managing all the physics interactions we're going to have within the game. Eventually, we'll wind up moving this to somewhere else, but for now, here is as good a place as any to actually create it, just to stand things up and get things running. Create a public constructor, and to it, pass a canvas element. Create our instance of our render, passing through the canvas element, and create our physics world, passing to it a box2d vector2 object of 0, 0 for gravity. Underneath the constructor, we'll want to create a public start method, return type void, which for now simply logs out something to the console saying that we've started. Make sure to save the file. Next, right click source, and we'll create a new file, we'll call it index.ts. This is going to house the main entry point of our application. Next, we'll want to set our window onload to a new function. We'll want to import engine 
from core engine. Next, we'll create the instance of our engine to it, passing an HTML canvas element. This is obtained by calling document.getElementById and passing viewport. Viewport, as you may recall, is the ID of our canvas in our HTML. Underneath this, we'll call engine.start. Back in package.json, we'll want to add a couple more things. We'll add a server script, which executes node and calls our webpack dev server JS file. This will give us a local web server that we can use for debugging purposes and to be able to actually run our code. We'll want to replace our build script with node executing our webpack CLI bin CLIJS. In the console, we can execute npm run build. If everything is hooked up correctly, you should see here that our modules were successfully built. And if we look under dist, we have a bundle.js and a bundle.js.map file. Every once in a while, this node modules folder will actually expand for some reason. So you may have just have to collapse it. I'm not sure why it does that, but every once in a while it happens to me. Next in the terminal, we want to split the terminal. This will give us a second one right next to the first. For now, take a copy of index.html and paste it into the dist folder. In our second terminal, change directory to dist. Execute npm run server. <laughs> if we scroll up in the console, we'll see that project is running at localhost 8080, webpack is served from slash, which is the root, and then content not from webpack is served from our absolute folder. Once this is done, we can actually access this in a browser. So what I've done here is browse to 127.0.0.1, port 8080. If we press F12 or Control shift i to open our dev tools and go to the console, we'll see here that we receive our started message. You also may see this failed to load resource 404 error, but if you look, it's just the fav icon. We haven't created one yet, so the browser is just complaining about that. So for now, this completes our project bootstrapping and this is actually where I'm going to cut this video short because I want to keep these in small digestible chunks. So next time we'll actually be setting up our game loop and our render loop so that we can actually see some things on screen and we'll be making this element, this canvas element here, um, fill the screen but maintain aspect ratio. So tune into the next video to see how that's all done. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.